Hello, I'm Tom Holohan, and welcome to the Stratford Library and Square One Theater Company's Readers Theater Showcase. We are happy to bring you this live on Zoom recording of Wendy McLeod's comedy, Slow Food. It's performed by three actors you'll soon meet with sto stage notes read by me off screen. Enjoy. Slow Food by Wendy McLeod. It's a Sunday night in March at a Greek restaurant in Palm Springs. A prosperous looking married couple sits at a table holding menus. There are two glasses of water on the table and an unlit candle. A waiter hurries over. Here I am. Hooray. Not a moment too soon. Our hero. Now then, who needs a drink? I gave my order to the other waiter. Ryan? The guy with the beard. Did they not tell you I was your waiter? We were looking for you. I just had to pop into the kitchen. And when we couldn't find you, I asked the other guy. Uh, Brian. Brian. Uh, he was really thirsty. You had your waters. That's liquid gold in these parts. <laughs> I was thirsty for a beer. Let's start over, shall we? My name is Stephen, and I'll be your waiter tonight. Hi, Stephen. Uh, that's Stephen with a PH. What did you ask Brian to bring you, just so I can get up to speed on my own table? A Sam Adams. We have a microbrew on special, the Sweet Goat. Sam Adams is fine. It's local. I'll try it. I thought you wanted wine. Well, You're it's local. You're on vacation. Try something new. I'll try it the next round. You can't just go from a Sam Adams to a... It's delicate. How delicate can a beer be? Oh my God, you need a candle. We're fine. You're sitting in the dark. Were you guys planning to make out? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I was working on it. Oh my God, this lighter's hopeless. I'll be right back. Uh, can we go ahead and order? We're starving. <laughs> it's midnight our time. Just tell your stomach you're in California now, where it's only nine o'clock. We were lucky you were still serving. You were lucky on a Sunday night. Um, I was thinking about the Spanakopita. You haven't even heard the specials. Such a different rhythm. You're from the East Coast, am I right? New York. See, you can tell. And she told you. The mindset is so fear-based. In this case, it's actually hunger-based. The fear that will run out of beer, the fear that will run out of food. We've got plenty of food. Uh, well, why don't you tell us about the specials? We do have an amazing lamb special. I love lamb. It's braised. Salt. It's been braising all day. Dimitri has had those chops stewing in rosemary, tomato sauce, olive oil, feta. Ooh, yum. So you want to switch to the lamb? No, it just sounded good. Oh. I think I'll stick with the spanakopita. But I'm having the lamb. It sounds delicious. Not more delicious than spanakopita, apparently. She's a vegetarian. Well, I mean, not a total vegetarian. She rarely eats meat. Well, that might have been a helpful thing to tell me. I could have recommended vegetarian options. Do you not recommend the spanakopita? Spanakopita is spanakopita, you know? It's like the Sam Adams of Greek food. I like Sam Adams. And I like Spanakopita. Then everybody's happy. You don't sound happy. It's just, over the years, one develops a certain expertise. Absolutely. And there are some customers who appreciate that expertise and others who, you know, go their own way. <laughs> we totally appreciate it, which is why I'm trying that lamb. <laughs> You're trying it? I'm having it. You're going to like it. It's been braising all day. I'm sure it's very tender. We're all used to pressing that minute button on the microwave. What time does the kitchen close? See, right there. Fear. Everybody just needs to relax. That's what we're trying to do. We're just so hungry. Breathe. Right. No, really. Breathe. We take breathing. In through the nose, out through the nose. 
One, two, three. Like a breaking wave. Better? Better. Do you do yoga? I do. And it shows. I, I think I'll have a salad, too. Which salad? Uh, the Greek salad. Oh. Is there a better salad? How many Greek salads have you had in your life? Palm Springs is about going wild, you know? We swim naked here. We have orgies. People come here, they've always come here, to experiment. And there you are, ordering the Greek salad. Bring whatever salad you'd recommend. I don't want to decide for you. I'm just asking for an exchange, you know? Let me suggest two or three salads so that you can choose with the benefit of my expertise. If we could maybe move things along. We've had a stressful day. They didn't have our rental car, so now we're driving an enormous white van that makes us look like Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> or serial killers. We get to our hotel and the hot tub is on the fritz. We've been looking forward to a hot tub. So we head out to dinner only to find the first three restaurants are closing up for the night. So we were your fourth choice. Oh, oh no, the concierge recommended you. Do you even like Greek food? Well, I love it. I, I lived on Naxos. Oh, well, you're the expert then. I wasn't saying that. And what about you? I'll eat anything. I'll eat a braised kitten at this point. <laughs> Not a kitten. I wouldn't really eat a kitten. He would never eat a kitten. My cat. Your cat died? My cat was murdered. Oh my god. By some rental car thug driving 60 miles an hour. This is a small town. People live here. Our companion animals live here. And then some tourist who doesn't know the difference between the freeway and Palm Canyon Drive. The bastard didn't even stop. Maybe he didn't know he'd hit something. He didn't see me running into the street? How did he miss that? He would have had to have been looking in his rearview mirror and... I'd had that cat for 17 years. And you probably wouldn't have missed her much longer. I mean, the average life expectancy of a cat. <laughs> Are you really going to get scientific now? No. You haven't even asked me her name. What was it? Una. Do you know why? Be because Una Chaplin used to come here in the 30s. How did you know that? There was a brochure. I always loved that name. Una. Una. We hardly knew ye. But you had her for 17 years. <laughs> Which is longer than most marriages. <laughs> but I mean, it's not like he hardly knew her. Have you ever lost someone? It's not a someone. <laughs> I think to Steve it is. Stephen, please. Steve sounds like the name of a pool guy. Now then, where were we? You were going to recommend a salad. Just have the Greek salad. So you're telling her what to eat now? She wanted the Greek salad. Well, maybe I should try something new. Don't get bullied out of the Greek salad. I didn't know I was bullying my customers. He didn't mean bullied. I just meant have what you really want. I'm just trying to make sure she's happy with what she orders. I am too. But if the Greek salad isn't good here... I didn't say that. Well, but, but I mean, if there's a salad that's better. It's not about good, bad, better. It's about planning a meal, you know? How do the flavors work together? Not that you'd ever notice if you kick things off with a Sam Adams. Could you maybe just finish taking our order? So, you're having the lamb. The special. I better make sure we have some left. But you were just pushing the lamb. But you're not the only table I've been telling about the lamb. If you don't have the special, I'll take any lamb. I didn't say I didn't have the special. I said I had to check. Well, we don't want to put you to any trouble. Oh, it's no trouble. I just have to see how many orders we have left. If there's none left, just bring two Spanakopas. I thought I was supposed to bring you a different lamb. Bring me anything. Bring me the busboy to chew on. I don't appreciate being yelled at. I didn't yell. 
He's sitting there barking out orders. Oh, he really needs a beer. Hey, it looks like maybe Brian's bringing it. That's probably not even your beer. It looks like a Sam Adams. Oh, it is a Sam Adams. What did you just do? I will handle the drink order. But he was bringing it. I would prefer to be responsible for the timing of the meal. If you're thirsty, drink water. It's not the same. You're in the desert. You have to stay hydrated. Beer doesn't hydrate you. Not if you don't bring it, it doesn't. Was that sarcasm? Can you please just get me that beer? Maybe you'd rather head over to the bar yourself. Can I do that? Maybe you don't need a waiter at all tonight. Maybe you don't need a chef. Maybe you'd just like to go into the kitchen and whip something up. We just want to place our order. I understand that. I just need to make sure we have some of the special left. Well, could you do that, please? Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Let's get out of here. What? And go where? There must be something open. It's Sunday night. My beer was right there, and he sent it back. Oh, maybe it wasn't your beer. Of course it was my beer. It was a Sam Adams. You said yourself it was a Sam Adams. Other people drink Sam Adams. He waved him away. He's very territorial. He's a nightmare. You're just hungry. It is possible that both things are true. Now don't get all philosophy major. There's probably a McDonald's out on the strip. I don't want to eat McDonald's. You get your food really fast. It smells really good in here. Maybe I should just go to the bar. Oh, don't. You'll make him mad. So what if I make him mad? He has control of the food. Maybe I can talk to the owner. Dimitri? You see anybody that looks Greek around here? Mm. I don't. Maybe there is no Dimitri. Maybe Dimitri has an imaginary friend. Drink your water. You probably are dehydrated. I'm not cranky because I'm dehydrated. Hmm. Happy anniversary. Right. Uh, who are you calling? I just want to check in with Justin. We're having dinner. See how his interview went. You just talked to him. That was before the interview. He won't know anything yet. I'll shoot him a text. Do you have to do it now? I don't want that kid waiting on tables forever. He just got out of school. Almost a year ago. Can you please put the phone away? I'll just step outside. What, and leave me sitting here alone? Where is he? Let's just enjoy the time away from him. If he finds out there's enough lamb, will he go ahead and put in the order? No, he'll come racing back with the good news. Our hero. Well... What if we praise him? Why? Well, I mean, that's what he wants, right? I don't want to praise him. Well, everybody needs a compliment now and then. I don't care what he needs. Practice on me. What's one thing you like about me? I like everything. You have to tell me one thing. You can't think of anything? You can't force someone to compliment you. Apparently not. I like everything about you. But you can't come up with one specific thing. You have beautiful eyes. <sighs> what? Come on. But you do. What color are they? Green. Really? They're not? <sighs> they are. You think I don't know what the color your eyes are? It seems you do. Now be nice to him. Ugh. It might mean getting our food sooner. He shouldn't be rewarded for his craziness. I don't think he's crazy. He's, he's more like a narcissist. But there's an anger thing in there, too. No, oh, passive aggressive. Yeah, but sometimes it's aggressive aggressive. Well, he had a bad day, I guess. We had a bad day. Well. Didn't we? Oh, the hot tub was broken. It's a very expensive hotel. We had to rent a van. It wasn't easy to handle on those switchbacks. We missed room service. By a matter of minutes. Meanwhile, people are stepping on landmines and dying of cholera. His day was no worse than ours. His cat died. 
That wasn't today. We don't know. It happened at night. Well, maybe it was last night. That cat was ancient. It wasn't murder. It was assisted suicide. I'm just saying, at this point, it's not about liking him. It's about handling him. Let's be smart about this. It's the only restaurant open. We need him to bring us food. What's the best way to make that happen? What would I compliment? His apron? Surely you can find something. Good news! There's one order left. Brian tried to take it, but I told him, hands off. That lamb is mine. That is great. Uh, well done. You did a good job of handling that, Brian. So you went ahead and turned the order in? I wouldn't do that without checking with you first. Because I was hearing a lot of different things over here. Spanakopitas, Greek salads, other lamb dishes. I'm committed to that braised lamb, especially now that you went to the mat for me. And she'll have the spanakopita and the Greek salad. Or, or whatever salad you recommend. The Greek salad's fine. She asked for my recommendation. She will be happy with whatever salad you bring her. I think maybe she can speak for herself. You know what? I'm really craving that Greek salad. It's very good. Oh, great. I mean, not as good as the pomegranate greens, but... When you have a craving... Oh, the pomegranate greens sound good, too. They would go better with a spanakopita. Oh, okay, then. Not that it matters. I mean, they come sequentially. Bring everything at once. Just bring whatever's ready as soon as it's ready. Including dessert? Oh, we won't be having dessert. We, we don't want to keep you here for dessert. You're not keeping me. Oh, surely you have someone to go home to. I wish. I don't even have a cat. When was that hit and run? Uh, Stephen doesn't want to talk about it. When exactly was Una run over? I'm afraid I don't really understand your question. It was just last night, or...? Are you implying that I made it up? Oh, he's not implying that at all. We were just wondering when it happened. Because it just seems like we all had this really bad day. Bad day? We're all in Palm Springs, where the sun is always shining. If we just decide it's a good day, then it is. From that moment on. From the moment we get our food, anyway. Okay, I get it. Mr. Grumpy's hungry. So, we've got one lamb special, one spanakopita, and one Greek salad. Oh, I, I switched to the pomegranate greens. Did you? They sounded good. Oh, God. I better make sure we have the pomegranates. Well, just the greens would be fine. Just the greens? Don't be crazy. If you don't have the pomegranates, just bring you the Greek salad. If we don't have the pomegranates, I probably would go with the Greek. Well, either is fine. I'm going to try for the pomegranate greens, though. Okay. It's just... Sunday night, you know? We're closed on Mondays, we don't get restocked until Tuesday. Well, we completely understand. And if there's any hope of a beer? I haven't forgotten your beer. I didn't think you'd forgotten. I was just dealing with your lamb order. I can't be in the kitchen and in the bar at the same time, can I? Oh, of course you can't. Has this one ever waited tables? Three guesses. But you have. In Maine, Bar Harbor. Oh, that's a completely different clientele. Wasps know nothing about food. But gay men, forget about it. They know everything. Well, this was when back when I was in college. Well, I've been doing it for 20 years. No. It's true. Uh, see these readers? Oh, you don't look... Uh, no. Nobody can believe it. Believe what? That I'm over 40. I believe it. Oh, he, he means that you seem so experienced. Here's the thing that comes with experience. It's all about sequence. For example, I could go now and turn your food order in, or I could go straight to the bar and get your beer. Which do you think? Both. I would turn the food order in, and then while they're plating the food, go to the bar and get Peter his beer. Definitely. Get that order in there before the kitchen closes. Will you let me worry about that? You're on vacation. You need to relax. Am I right? He does. The thing that would help me relax is a drink. Uh-oh. I'm not an alcoholic. If you say so. He's really not. 
that particular moral gray area is a big part of my job. Do I ignore the red flags? When do I cut somebody off? Not before the first drink. Sometimes it's all about the first drink. Maybe they're in recovery, I don't know. I'm not in recovery. I mean, hey, as a child of alcoholics, I'm pretty good at spotting the warning signs. Well, he just has a beer or two after work. Check the recycling bin. I don't want to tell you how to do your job, but could you? The lamb is a stew. It's ready to go. That is such great news. That's why you should maybe trust me with the timing. He's used to being the boss, isn't he? <laughs> He's got a very demanding job. And I wouldn't know anything about that. Oh, oh, a different kind of demanding. What do you do? I'm sorry, but I really don't want to discuss my job. This is a chance to get away from his job. Got it. You're on vacation. Anniversary trip. And where are the kids? College. Well, one's in college. One just graduated. We're empty nesters now. That's hard. You miss them. Oh, so much. What did they call? One of them does. What's the deal with the other one? No deal. But he calls when things are going well, you know, but he'll never tell us when he's struggling. I was the same way. No, we are not talking about our kids. Oh, no, we're, we're taking this time for ourselves. Two college tuitions. I'm surprised you can afford an anniversary trip. We can afford it. Not to be braggy. I mean, if you're worried about your tip. He didn't mean that. Dimitri pays me a very good salary. Waiting tables is just a very small part of what I do here. I mean, I'm supervising the renovation. Oh, what renovation? You must have noticed the construction. I'm obsessed with architecture. That's what brought me to Palm Springs. I came here for the architecture. I'm all about mid-century modern. I know someone who does mid-century tours. Very exclusive. You get to see places you couldn't get into otherwise. Frank Sinatra's house, Steve McQueen's. Wow. And not just the exteriors, the interiors, the bedrooms. But I mean, it's not Steve McQueen's bedroom anymore. To me, it will always be Steve McQueen's bedroom. He was only the most handsome man that ever lived, am I right? Oh my God, so right. See that wall? It's going. I told Dimitri, I was like, this is Palm Springs. People come here for the climate. People want to sit outside. Except when summer comes. In the summer, there are misters. Our customers will be misted. Like houseplants. And the water will be scented. Lemon, lemon mist. Uh, what are you doing? Brian's headed to the bar. Well, let Brian grab the beer so you can go straight to the kitchen. What was I just saying about trust? I really, really want my beer now. Oh, why don't I bring you a sample of the microbrew? I want a Sam Adams. Oh, come on, just try the sweet goat. You can both have a sample. And a Sam Adams, too! Oh, he's forgotten about the food now. Your beer has just cost us our food. I don't think it's unreasonable to want a beer after a long day of travel. You had to have that beer. Yes, tonight I did. Oh, tonight? So I like a beer at night. Oh, a beer? Just because you have a single corona and end up lap dancing. I wasn't lap dancing. Flirting with Dr. <sighs> What's-His-Name. He is my colleague. That's one word for it. You flirt? What? Oh, come on. Seriously, when? Amelie. That was years ago. She was working for us and you ended up waiting on her. It's not like anything happened. <sighs> Did something almost happen? No. I, I thought we were talking about flirting. I didn't know we were talking about events. There was no event. But it sounds like you would have liked an event. Men always want events. Okay. What about you? Going on about Steve McQueen when I'm sitting right here. I agreed that a dead movie star was handsome. And how do you think that made me feel? And that's the same as having an affair with an au pair? What affair? She was a kid. She didn't look like a kid in that bathing suit. You were falling all over yourself to drive him to the beach. The boys loved the beach. 
I, I mean, you don't even see me anymore. I come downstairs looking fabulous in a, a new dress and a blowout and high heels that really hurt. And you're like, where are the car keys? That's because you never put the keys back on the hook. So we're always spent 10 minutes searching bags and coat pockets. See, yelling at me for losing the car keys is not romantic. It's not seductive. I'm too hungry to seduce anybody. When do you ever seduce me? You, you just poke up against me in bed. That's what it feels like to you? When I'm trying to sleep. You're asleep by 10 o'clock. I have to get up very early. Between finishing your New Yorker article and turning off the lights is a very narrow window. Well, if you would just turn off the baseball game. Well, maybe if I would, if I thought there was a chance. I mean, where's the candles? Where's the massages? I rub your shoulders all the time. If I come over to your chair and sit on the floor. You're the one that wants your shoulders rubbed. You are in for a treat. Where's the Sam Adams? Do me a favor. Just try the sweet goat. I asked for both. The sweet goat is so light and delicate. Oh my God. Did he just chug that? It's beer. Look at the size of the glass. It's clearly a sipping situation. Mm, yum. Right? What did you get? Mm, little citrus. Good. Um, something weedy. Oh, you can tell she's been in the business. She doesn't even drink beer. Oh, I'll drink this beer. It's special, isn't it? On your recent voyage to the bar, did you manage to turn our order in? I'm not going to explain this again. There's no need to turn that order in. The lamb is a stew. The spanakopita is prepped. At this point, it's all about plating it. Well, maybe you can go and do that. I don't plate the food. The chef plates the food. If I had to plate every order that went out, I wouldn't have any time to spend with my customers. Maybe you're spending a little too much time with the customers. Guilty as charged. We certainly don't want to monopolize you. That's where I get the payback, you know, in the relationship. We begin as strangers and end as friends. I'll take a bottle of this sweet goat. It's not a bottle. Uh, a glass, then. The beer is kept in oaken casks. So, a keg. Kegs are metal. The beer is not. I can assure you, kept in a metal keg. I'll take a glass too, the biggest you've got. What about your Sam Adams? I will take any beer you are willing to bring me. And could we maybe get a bread basket while you're we're, we're waiting? I'm not going to let you fill up on bread. Is Dimitri around? Oh, believe me, you won't lay eyes on Dimitri. He never leaves the kitchen. He relies on me for front of house. He's a little damaged. Dimitri is damaged? You wouldn't believe what that man has been through. I mean, I thought I had it rough, but I didn't have to go through a tenth of what he went through. What did he go through? It would take hours. Which we don't have. How about that bread? Maybe a bread basket is a good idea. Thank you. To slow down the alcohol. What alcohol? You just had a beer. I had a thimble. It was all like a mug for fairies. What? The way you talk to service people. I was trying to get you your food. Oh, right. It was all about me. You're cranky because you're hungry. When your blood sugar drops, it's like I'm married to a different woman. You just delete that DVR. Wait, what? You, you take over that remote control and clean it out. Somebody has to, or it fills up and we lose everything. I was saving some of those for when you're away, when I, when I can sit down and watch them without you moaning about subtitles and chick flicks. Fine, I won't touch the DVR. I'm just saying that you need to consult with me. When do you consult with me? About what? You're the one who chose Palm Springs. You didn't want to go to Palm Springs? No, I did. Well, I'm sorry if I forced you to go to Palm Springs. Wait, I'm the one who booked the flights and the car and the hotel, which, okay, didn't totally pan out. But it's beautiful. No hot tub. But that pool and direct flights. 
Maybe we should get the name of his tour guide. We are not asking that man for anything. Wait, it's just a phone number. What if it, what's the guy's another Steve? Steven. Civilized tulip glass for you. Ah. Uh, Big ass Austrian mugstein bucket for you. Thank you. You're welcome. <sighs> Another one, please. You like? Hell yes. If you like the sweet goat, you will love the fatted calf. Bring it on. He's got to get that order in. He wants me to try the fatted calf. We better make sure we got it in. Our distributor can be a little flaky. He doesn't need another beer right away. I'll share mine. I I'm just really craving that spanakopita. It's not made here. What? That's why I was trying to steer you away. It's one of the few frozen items on the menu. Oh, well, maybe I should change my order. You can't change your order now. It's not like it's gone in yet. I'll bring you a menu. No. What's wrong with frozen spanakopita? It's not like it's frozen when they serve it. Nope. We stick it in the microwave. Ooh, that doesn't make it sound very appetizing. If you like, I could stick it in the real oven. It would only take 20 minutes. 20 minutes? I'd offer you the special, but there's only the one order left. You can have mine. And what would you have? Wait. I thought you were a vegetarian. <laughs> Just until I get very, very hungry. Let me see what I can do. He's not going to turn in that order now. He's going to say he wasn't sure what we wanted because you wavered. He made me waver. Frozen spanakopita microwaved? Of course it's frozen. What do you mean, of course it's frozen? That, that's my beer. You said I could have it. That was for his benefit. A sip? It won't be a sip. You don't even like beer. I like this beer. That's because it's not beer. Of course it's beer. All that talk about how light it is. It's light because it's not beer. It's water. Well, I'm surprised you'd stoop to drinking it then. Oh, come on. One sip. Okay. You can sort of understand how people throughout history have come to eat each other. Maybe we should eat the waiter. Well, at least then we wouldn't have to tip him. Tip him? I'm not going to tip him. But you have to. His cat just died. Tipping is not about the circumstances of someone's life. It's about service, which he has failed to provide. He's provided it. It just hasn't been very good. This isn't service, it's a hostage situation. Oh, he's just lonely. I don't care. Well, what if he has cancer or something and really needs those tips? Well, maybe if he had gotten a real job when he was young, instead of moving to Palm Springs to jump in and out of swimming pools. That can happen to anybody. I mean, one day you're waiting tables and then boom, you're 40 something. That's exactly what I want Justin to understand. But you're making him feel like a failure. I just wanted to make sure he's living up to his potential. Well, everybody waits tables at some point. I'm not waiting on tables. You're not waiting on tables. Well, I did. Good news. I've scared up a second order of the lamb special. Brian had an order saved, but then his customer switched to something else. Oh, what? I can find out. No need. He's curious. It doesn't matter. Menu envy happens all the time. People want whatever the next table has. But in this case, we both want the braised lamb. She's just exploring her options. You don't go home with the first guy you dance with. But this is the second guy. She danced with the spanakopita. She learned some troubling things about it. And now she's going home with the lamb special. It will take two seconds to find out what they switch to. Oh, you don't have to do that. This is not about me. This isn't my anniversary trip. How many years, by the way? No. I'm sorry. We are not going to discuss this with you. Oh, honey. I was just asking. He's just hungry. 20 years? More? Is this the big silver anniversary? 
We are not your friends. Do you understand that? My wife has hypoglycemia and she needs some protein stat. If those two specials aren't here within five minutes alongside a big frosty Sam Adams, I will come into the kitchen, find Dimitri, and further damage his psyche with my complaints about the service. Well? Well, what? How about a thank you? I just got you your food. You haven't gotten me my food. You've just gotten rid of the waiter. Who has gone to get us our food. You didn't need to threaten him with Dimitri. It worked. We don't know if it worked. He was scared. He was offended. I don't care if he was offended. What you did was the worst possible thing you could do to a passive aggressive person. He will now withhold the food to assert his power. But he can't go home until we've had our dinner. He doesn't care. Nobody's waiting for him. He's got no life. What about orgies? You need to apologize. Yeah, right. I'm serious. I will not apologize. You have to. For what? Telling a man to do his job? We have different ideas about what his job is. He thinks his job is taking care of us. But he's not taking care of us. He's performing for us. But we don't have a cane to yank him with. I, I know it's very hard for you to have someone else in control. It's not about control. I think it would be in your interest, our interest, for you to apologize. I would see her sooner eat at McDonald's. I am not going to McDonald's. It's a five minute drive. I don't want to eat at McDonald's. I've said I don't want to eat at McDonald's, so this is something I'm asking you to do for me. It is, after all, our anniversary. Not until Tuesday. It's our anniversary trip. Am I supposed to go chase him down? Just wave him over. He's pretending not to see me. Keep trying. Maybe you should wave. You. Ugh. I looked like an idiot. He's not even looking. Now we're doing a little disco dance. Now we're looking at ourselves in the sideboard mirror. <sighs> Now we seem to be concerned with our nose. Hello, Earth to Stephen. I'm sorry. Were you gesturing at me? I was, yes. Because it was like a weird little royal wave. I was trying to get your attention. It was like Kabuki theater over here. But you got that I was trying to get your attention. I thought maybe you were landing a plane. I know you're busy. Extremely Really? Because I only see three tables and one of them is leaving. Did you need something? Oh, he needs to get something off his chest. I apologize for being unduly harsh before. Thank you. I appreciate that. It takes a big man to admit he was wrong. I wasn't wrong. It was a tonal thing. A tonal thing? You're lucky I didn't turn the bread basket over on your head. What bread basket? Somebody was being just a little bit bossy. Bossy? Well, more like... I was just trying to take care of my wife. Oh, so this is all about her. You're hungry. I get it. But there's no need to go on about your wife's hypoglycemia. I really do have hypoglycemia. All of a sudden, everybody has celiac disease or hypoglycemia. I mean, I was tested. I can't keep it all straight. This one has hypoglycemia. That one's an alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. If you say so. Well, he really isn't. But I see someone freak out when his beer is a few minutes late. Half an hour. It's been half an hour. You had a bucket of sweet goat. I want it at Sam Adams. It's going to take more than a beer to chill you out, darling. Okay, we're done. I retract my apology. I wish I had time to care. It's like you're working so hard. You're over there staring at yourself in the mirror. I had ink on my nose. It's that kind of vanity that got you where you are today. And where am I today? Working a menial job. I happen to be supervising the renovation. Oh. You're the architect. I didn't say I was the architect. You're the contractor? Obviously not. What'd you make last year? It's not polite to ask that. Why did we just whip out our dicks and measure them? Oh, you'd enjoy that, wouldn't you? I am attracted to men 
that doesn't mean I'm attracted to you. If you hadn't been so busy working on your tan and having orgies, you might have buckled down and found a real job. Oh, so now you're my father. I'm not old enough to be your father. Yeah, you are. Oh, come on. We're the same age. How old do you think I am? You're at least... I'm 41. If you say so. Would you like to see my driver's license? Yes. I don't have to show you my driver's license. A grown man lying about his age. This is so typical. Excuse me. People are as vain as women. Excuse me? Not you. I'm not a woman? Of course you're a woman. So all gay men are vain? Not all of them. I don't lie about my age. That's because you're not old enough to have to lie about your age. Oh, don't fall for that. He's playing like a drum. Is the apology over? What apology? It was retracted. So we're clearly not to the making amends stage. Does Dimitri know that you're discouraging alcohol consumption at his restaurant? I'm not discouraging it. Then where's my Sam Adams? You mean your fatted calf? I don't give a damn about your local beer. I want my Sam Adams. And we're back to where we started. And why is that, I wonder? Could it be, oh, I don't know, because you never brought me my Sam Adams! Remember your blood pressure. My blood pressure is fine. I cycle 50 miles a week. Talk about vanity. I do it to stay healthy. Many drinkers feel they have to atone through exercise. I do not cycle to atone. Could you maybe keep your voice down? Well, let's just all take a breath here. We did that already. You need to be considerate of the other diners. They chose this restaurant. They made reservations. You two just wandered in off the street. And yet somehow there were tables available. It's Sunday night. Look at all the empty tables. What do you suppose? Why do you suppose that is? Because your yelling has scared everybody off? I didn't scare them off. They were never here. There are diners here tonight who have chosen to celebrate the high points of their lives with us. That family who's leaving, their son just got into Stanford. That older gentleman on the two-top is a widower who's just gotten engaged. And that woman in the corner has just finished chemo and finally has her appetite back. This evening was important to them. This evening was important to me. It's our anniversary trip, which, which so far has kind of sucked. Tell you what, in the spirit of rapprochement, um, I will ask Dimitri if he could prepare a little amuse-bouche while you're waiting. It's a very nice thought, but... Trust me, you'll love it. Look. What? That table has just left. What about it? There's a bread basket. Can you tell if there's anything in it? Yeah, the napkin's folded over. Maybe it was refolded to keep the remaining bread warm. You think? He'll be back any second. He's in the kitchen. It's too risky. I'll just pretend to be going to the bathroom. Well, here, take my purse. Why? We have to have something to put it in. Why can't I just grab it? Oh, for God's sake. I'll go. You don't have to. Well, you won't carry a purse. Fine. Give me the purse. You can't carry a purse. It will arouse suspicion. Is the bartender looking? No. Are you sure? He's replacing a keg. My heart is racing. You are a bad ass. You should have seen that old man's face. What if he tells Stephen? He's laughing. Oh. What? No bread? No butter. I can go. I can't wait. Mm. By the way, he finds you attractive. Stop it. He does. 
And you know this how? Because he said that he didn't. He's not my type. Well, you're his. Why don't you try flirting with him? <laughs> right. He'd love it. I'm sure he would. It would make his night. That is a really strange suggestion for a wife to make. I'm telling you what you have to do to get the food. Maybe I should just offer to service him. <sighs> okay, that's weird. I was joking. All I'm saying is that he's gay and you're an attractive man. You think so? Of course. Objectively? Yes, objectively. So the average person on the street would find me attractive? Yes. What about you? I have no idea. You have no idea whether you find me attractive? I thought you meant would they find me attractive? Of course they would. Right. What does that mean? Middle-aged women are invisible. Except middle-aged men. They're not looking at us. They're looking at Amelie's. Well, I'm looking at you, so shut up. You shut up. I find you very attractive. You're hallucinating. Then I've been hallucinating for a very long time. 23 years. It's like we're having a little tea party. Are you sorry we didn't have a little girl? Not really. Seriously, if a genie or whatever offered you a daughter right now, what would you say? Well, would I have to send one of my boys back? You get to keep Justin and Patrick, but you get a daughter, too. I'm afraid that train has left the station. Maybe we can still catch it. We're too old. We could adopt. We just got our lives back. If we had a baby, we would not be on vacation in Palm Springs. We'd be home picking up Cheerios, our ears glued to a baby monitor. On the upside, we would have had dinner. But not together. Remember that? How only one person could sit and eat? The other one had to be rocking and bouncing and walking around the house pointing at, out kitty cats. Kit Kat, pup pup. <laughs> Are you sorry about not having a daughter? I could never have a daughter. I'd never sleep. You don't sleep now. That's true. The job. The boys. They're fine. Maybe. They're fine. But it's always something, you know? Somebody's having an appendectomy. Somebody slept through the SATs. Somebody's weed is confiscated. They still need us. You couldn't stand it if they didn't. We should have made them get summer jobs. I hated my summer job. I worked for a moving company. I lifted pianos. You lifted pianos. What is that boy going to do with a comp lit degree? You were a philosophy major. Who went to law school. Who started a company. But law school gave me the tools. He'll find his way. How? He doesn't get up before one o'clock. He will when he has to. Those boys have got to learn. Oh, don't start. They seem to think that... None, none of that. When I was their age, They're I... young. Of course they've got stuff to learn. Don't know how to fill a prescription. That's because you're always doing it for them. I'm not going to be here forever. Which is why you have to let it go. You would have loved a daughter. You would have loved a daughter. Maybe. You can have a daughter with your next wife. What wife? Oh, if you were ever widowed, they'd be on you like ants on sugar. Who was? All of them, all the single ladies. And the occasional waiter. He's coming. Hide the bread. Now remember, you're gonna flirt. I don't know how to flirt. Oh, please. With a guy, I mean. It's the same thing, double entendres. Everything they say is hilarious. I think you're really going to like this. I know we're going to like it. It's layers of phyllo drenched with butter and stuffed with fresh spinach and melted feta. Isn't this spanakopita? No. Mm, it sure tastes like spanakopita. I mean, there's obviously some overlap. There's only so many things growing in Greece. It's, it's a very arid climate. Oh, I, I know about the climate. Excuse me. Well, I mean, I used to live there. That is not spanakopita. It's bunrusha. I've never heard of that. It's regional. Uh, what region? Mm. Right. 
Delicious. You really like it? It's the best bun rush I've ever tasted. Let's see. It's unbelievable succulent. Oh, I'm so glad. Tiny, but delicious. Like fairy food. I do love fairies. I heart fairies. You're bad. Isn't he bad? So bad. What region is this from? You'll have to ask Dimitri. Well, where is Dimitri? Okay, this is weird. We don't know where he is. Maybe he had a hot date. <laughs> <laughs> right. Dimitri. <laughs> Why is that funny? Well, for one thing, Dimitri weighs like 700 pounds. Wow, you would definitely notice that gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I shouldn't laugh. You have to laugh. Right? How else would we get through the day? Is everybody <laughs> calming down now? Don't I look calm? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't that funny. It's the way he said it. It's my timing. You know what they say. Timing is everything. You know, it's hard to believe that you're single. I'm not single. I'm between men. Sounds like an interesting place to be. <laughs> <laughs> Have you put in our order yet? Oh, your order's in, but without Dimitri, who knows how long it's going to take. If you do it right, it takes a good, long time. Uh, better than pastry <laughs> right at the corner of your... Uh, oh. uh, didn't I order a salad? Oh my god, you did. Get your head in the game there, Steve-O. Did somebody say head? <laughs> <laughs> Weren't you going to check on the pomegranates? See what I have to put up with? A girl needs her greens. She is very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you didn't know how to flirt. I know how to flirt. It would seem so. You thought I was funny. Apparently, you're hilarious. Every once in a while, it would be nice if you laughed at one of my jokes. What jokes? I say things that other people find amusing. She is very hungry. It was wordplay. Sounds like an interesting place to be. You told me double entendres. All of a sudden, I'm married to Mae West. I wouldn't mind if you flirted with a lesbian. Of course you wouldn't mind it. You'd love it. But, but when I try to flirt with a waiter... Well, why don't you ever flirt with me? We're married. I don't have to flirt with you. If you want to stay married, you do. When was the last time you flirted with me? Oh, don't try to turn this around. I was just trying to get your food. You were enjoying yourself. Oh, and we all know that's not allowed. No, wait. Uh, what? You make me sound like I'm some kind of wife. No, no, you're not some kind of wife. Well, like I don't sleep with you and I, I get cranky and I'm not fun. You're super fun. I think I'm pretty fun. I wouldn't be here if you weren't fun. What do you mean? I mean, we're still together because we have fun. So if I stopped being fun, you'd leave? Of course not. Well, let's say I, I get cancer or whatever and have to do chemo and have all kinds of side effects. You're out of here? Who has cancer? Everybody. Did you just go for a checkup? Three weeks ago. How'd it go? Fine. Really? Well, there was a weird white spot, but it was fine. You didn't tell me anything about a weird white spot. There wasn't any reason to tell you. Where was the white spot? On the mammogram. On your body? Where was it on your body? My left breast, but it was nothing. They checked it out? Of course they checked it out. So you don't have cancer? Not yet. Well, don't get it just to spite me. Maybe I should just go to the bar. Right. He suggested it. He wasn't serious. If we were here having a drink, we'd just go up to the bar. It isn't that kind of a bar. It would take two seconds for the bartender to hand me a beer. Stephen would see you. Maybe you could create a diversion. Me? Cover me somehow. By doing what? 
Get him talking about Steve McQueen. And you just walk away from the table. I'll say I'm going to the restroom. Okay. The good news is we have the pomegranates. The bad news is still no Dimitri. Maybe he's having a cigarette in the parking lot. He quit three years ago. Did he maybe go home? He called there. Has he ever done this before? Never. Are you worried he's in crisis? Therapist. Are? Oh my God, this is like kismet. Oh, oh, but of course I'm, I'm on vacation. No, I know, I'm not asking for a session. If you two would excuse me. Where are you going? If I could just pick your brain. What do you know about depression? Nothing. You must know something. Um, I, I don't do depression. You don't? What do you do? Um, anxiety. But aren't they connected? Well, of course they're related. But if one of your anxiety patients were also depressed, what would you tell him? Um, get a prescription? Uh, I don't know. I have a friend who's on Lexapro and his personality's changed. I mean, totally changed. Well, some people swear by the herbals. St. John's wort? I tried it. Nothing. Well, maybe you're not depressed. Not depressed? I mean, you saw me. I just broke down in tears over a cat. Well, you haven't had a lot of time to process the death. It was over a year ago. But I'm stuck, you know, in the shame spiral. If only I hadn't let her out. If only I'd sprung for the reflector collar. I is Brian waving at you? Yeah, ignore him. He just wants to leave early. No, I think he's trying to get your attention. It all started with a breakup. This guy and I were together three years, but he turned out to be a total narcissist. Uh-huh. Totally passive aggressive. Right. But there was an anger thing in there too. Well it, well, it sounds like you're well out of that one. I know that intellectually. I mean, you and I are really in the same profession. Pastoral care, you know? Only I can't prescribe drugs. Well, I can't prescribe drugs either. But you must work with someone who can. If it's drugs you're after. I don't know what I'm after. This just isn't where I expected to be at this point in my life. With all I have to offer, why am I still waiting tables? Well, you, you are in charge of the renovation. Dimitri will listen to some salesman from Home Depot before he listens to me. It's not like I'm neutral. Have you thought about studying to be an architect? How am I going to pay for that? Do you know what the rents are out here? All these trophy homes sitting empty while I'm in some overpriced condo near the airport. What about opening a restaurant? With what capital? Well, what are you grateful for? Do you have a pool? I do have a pool, but I have to share it with about a million screaming kids and their fluorescent noodles. Oh. It's not that I don't like kids. Well, of course not. I wish I had kids. Well, you could still have kids. Ah, oh, what lesbian is going to have a baby for me? A single middle-aged waiter living in Never Never Land. I think there are lots of lesbians who'd have a baby for you. You seem like a very caring person. I, I mean, look how you took care of your cat. <laughs> is that a bread basket? Oh! Where did it come from? Well, didn't, didn't you bring it? That's not my napkin fold. That's Brian's fold. Oh, weird. Did Brian bring you a bread basket? I, I don't think so. Let's call him over and ask. It, it wasn't Brian. And where did it come from? We just wanted to save you the steps. You took that from another table? We didn't want the bread to go to waste. You know what would happen if somebody saw you? Oh, the table had already left. We serving food. Our grade would drop from an A to a C. If the health department didn't yank our permit altogether. Oh, well, we didn't know. It's not just taking the basket, it's that you lied to me. Well, we did ask for a bread basket. And I was bringing you a bread basket. Oh, we thought you'd forgotten. I'm not that old. Well, I, I wasn't thinking straight. The, the blood sugar. I'm just concerned about you. I mean, there are hygiene issues. Well, the family looked perfectly nice. 
You don't know. They could have had head lice. Oh, oh God. They could have spit out a crusty heel and put it back in the basket. Oh, no, the, the bread was very dry. Maybe they went to the bathroom and didn't wash their hands. Uh, is, is everything all right with Brian over there? What the hell is wrong with that boy? Why did you have to tell him I was a therapist? You know what happens. Everybody's depressed. I was willing to flirt with the guy, but you can't pony up a little counseling? Well, you didn't want to talk about your job. I would if I had to. I got in trouble for taking the bread basket. Didn't you hide it? I didn't know he was going to sit down. I didn't know he was going to start crying. What was he crying about? Well, we were back to the cat. What possessed you to bring up the cat? Well, he needed to hear he'd be a good father. As long as he doesn't live near a busy street. Hey! Where's you my You already beer? have beer. You already have one. No, you mean this tiny glass? I couldn't cross the dining room carrying two beers. Well, you were somehow able to manage one. Do you want a sip? A sip? That's all you gave me. No, I don't want a sip. I want a husband who thinks to bring his wife a beer. I'll go back. It's too late. We'll get caught. Oh, why couldn't Brian have been our waiter? I know. I love Brian. Don't you? I'm just so, so hungry. Are you sure you're okay? Why? You look a little peaked. I do? Are you sure that white spot was nothing? I'm sure. I mean... Why is there a white spot? Oh, it's just fatty tissue. Did they do a biopsy? They have to do a biopsy. Yes. You had a biopsy without me? Oh, just in the doctor's office. Did you get a second opinion? No. You didn't get a second opinion? I liked the first opinion. I liked the opinion that it wasn't cancer. But what if they're wrong? You, you want to keep looking until someone says it's cancer? I want to keep you alive. Well... That's what really made me take this trip, you know. We're, we're always saving money for retirement. Well, well, what if we're not around to enjoy it? You told me you were coming for the architecture. I didn't know you were having some kind of crisis. I'm not in crisis. Stephen's in crisis. You should have told me. You were already so stressed out. But that's my job, you know. You and the boys are my life. What? Are you crying? Why? That was just really nice. I'm sorry I don't flirt with you. Um, I don't really flirt with you either. You don't? Not really. You should. I know. You're very good at it. Your doctor friend is crazy about you. He is, actually. I forget to say something about your dress and your heels and your hair because you always look great. I don't always look great. You look great right now. I just got off the airplane. I like that jacket. It, it's a hoodie. But the color is nice on you. It's gray. But usually... Oh, come on. I live in those yoga pants. You really need to wash those yoga pants. <laughs> Good news. They found Dimitri. He was in the walk-in freezer. What was he doing in there? He must have passed out. How long had he been in there? Ever since the amuse-bouche. He's acting like the whole thing was my fault. I was just trying to do something nice for my customers. Those Greeks can be very macho. Then tell me about it. They're beautiful when they're young, and then the demon rises. Where is he now? He's flat out on the kitchen floor. They took two waiters and a bartender to get him that far. Have you called an ambulance? Of course I've called an ambulance. But in the meantime, he's freaking out. He thinks he has hypothermia. Oh, I'm sure he's fine. He wasn't in there that long. He's asking for a doctor. So who's making the food now? Making the food? Isn't there some kind of sous chef? It was an all-hands-on-deck situation. The man keeled over. He's in there having some kind of episode. If you ask me, he doesn't need a doctor. He needs a therapist. 
do you want me to check on him? Oh, I couldn't possibly ask you to do that. It's fine. You're an angel. You'll have to kind of squeeze through, though. He's blocking the swing door, swinging doors. Is that Irene's salad? What? In your hand. Is that my wife's salad? I completely forgot I was holding it. You can just set it down anywhere. The way he speaks to me, like I'm 10 years old. What are you doing? I can take that. I'm just about to set it down. Just set it there, at her place. I'm not going to eat it. Are you sure? I may pick out a tomato or something. I've got my eye on you. Uh, listen, while we have a minute alone, um, how do I put this? Whatever this is can go no further. I'm sorry? There's obviously some kind of chemistry here, but you are married, mister. I know. You are in a committed relationship and you need to honor that. I do. I mean, you have two children. Yes. They're almost grown, but they still... Need me? Yes. I mean, if at some point you were to come out, that would be different. <laughs> That's not going to happen. I'm strict. Gotcha. Really? And let's not waste precious time talking about the binary, okay? That's not what this is about. There is no this. Um, I'm pretty sure you don't usually flirt like that. I don't. She told me to. Irene is clearly a very generous person, which is why I would never do this to her. Irene and I are on our anniversary trip. I know. The irony. What I mean is Irene and I have been together for a long time. Longer than I had Una. Yes, and it's been a long time because I like being married to Irene. I would like to stay married to Irene. You are so good, so loyal. It's not loyalty. So modest. I happen to love her. I do too. You just met her. But I completely understand you loving her. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Whatever these beautiful bodies of ours are trying to tell us, we have got to resist. I'm not resisting anything. As I've become older, I've learned to say no to that bad choice. I'm not saying no. You have to. I'm not saying no to anything. Okay, not interested in being a piece on the side. I am saying yes to my wife. That's a better way to think about it. It's not how I think about it. That's actually what I want. Then you and I are on the same page. What I really want, what we really want from you more than anything is... I hear an ambulance. Oh, thank God! They've come for Dimitri! What do you think you're doing? I was just taking a tomato. A tomato? You don't even like tomatoes. You're telling me you were going to stop at the tomato? I was trying to take something you wouldn't want. Please, if I hadn't come back when I did, this salad would be down your gullet. Do you honestly think I would do that to you? I saw you. I wouldn't have eaten your salad. I'm the one with hypoglycemia. I know. I need this salad for medical reasons. Eat, enjoy. How can I when you're looking at me like that? Like what? Like an Edward Munch painting. I won't look at you. I'll look at the, the fountain. You sure you don't mind if I go ahead? Please. Of course, if you hadn't ordered a salad, we might be eating our main courses now. Not necessarily. Could I have a berry? One berry. Oh, fine. Fine? You could have ordered a salad. I didn't know I'd need a salad. No. Don't take the feta. 
How's Dimitri? He was fine. He doesn't need a therapist. He needs Jenny Craig. Did he seem damaged? He did a lot of damage on the way down. The entire, entire kitchen shut down for that? The sous chef could have kept on cooking. At least plating. Oh, and by the way, he thinks I'm in love with him. Steven? <laughs> Why? What did he say? He's very loyal to you, incidentally. Oh, well, that's nice. So he was letting me down easy. Oh, I'm sorry. That must have been very painful for you. <laughs> How was your salad? Good. You seem calmer. Me? Yes, you. A minute ago, you thought I was crushing on Brian. You were accusing me of getting cancer to spite you. If you did have cancer, you'd tell me, right? Of course. You didn't tell me you had a white spot. I didn't want to worry you. I live to worry. It's what I do. I figured why should both of us be freaking out? You were freaking out? A little. You were freaking out without me? Well, only for a week. What did we promise each other? In sickness and in health? And I was somewhere in between. Why didn't you tell me about the biopsy? I could have gone with you. Well, I had to take whatever appointment they had, and, and I couldn't work around your whatever. They would have canceled my whatever. Oh, maybe. Hey, I was there for Patrick's surgery. Well, of course you were there for Patrick. What does that mean? Well, he's your child. And you're my wife. But the boys come first. Is that what you think? It's not what I think. But it's what you feel. When I came home from my checkup, you didn't even ask me about it. I just assumed that there was anything to tell. You didn't even remember I had a checkup. I guess it's nothing but doctors from here on out. We've always had checkups. Sometimes it feels like the wolves are circling the cabin, you know? I told you I'm fine. Like the sharks are circling the boat. Don't be silly. We're limping gazelles and... We are not limping gazelles. I mean, it's happening. People we know didn't used to die. There were overdoses. Who had a... Oh, yeah, well, she was always a mess. Car accidents. But they didn't just get sick. Are you thinking about your brother? It's a worst case scenario. But at least his mind is still sharp. That's what makes it so bad. He knows what's happening to him. Oh, thank God for computers. At least he can spell things out with his eyes. Oh, I can't even think about it. That's exactly why I didn't tell you. What is? You can't handle it. Can't handle what? Being around a sick person. I'm always worried I'm going to say the wrong thing. That's because you do say the wrong thing. You, you talk ten times too loud and start making terrible jokes. Robert thought it was funny. I don't think he did. His eyes were laughing. He started pressing his buzzer. He was pressing the buzzer because he was having some kind of breathing episode. And what do you think caused his breathing episode? That's why I don't like to visit. I have no idea what to say. You don't have to say anything. Just be there. Watch the news with him. When you're young, it never occurs to you that time is finite. You sleep the day away. Mm, you do. When you're young, time is the enemy. You think, when is this going to happen? Why do I have to wait for that? When you get married, you think, I'm going to live with this person day in and day out for the next 60 years. You do? You think, this might be the last woman I will ever sleep with. Might be? This will be the last woman I will ever sleep with. If you're lucky. Yes, exactly. That's my point. If you're lucky. Eventually, you realize you'd be lucky to get 60 years. I mean, look at my parents. They should be great for all, for all the years they've had together. Instead, they're in a constant state of exasperation. The way they speak to each other. Well. What? The way your dad speaks to your mom. But she can be annoying, too. Everybody's annoying. How am I annoying? You know how. You really find me annoying? You can be very bossy. <laughs> I take care of business. I get it done. Palm Springs, baby. You're living the good life thanks to my bossiness. Well, I do make my own salary. Well. Maybe it's not as big as yours, but... 
It's pro bono work. Except that I get paid. Sure, okay, but not enough. Not enough for what? I'm saying you're worth more. I don't define myself that way. Okay, but the world does. What? I'm saying money is tangible. Outward manifestation of success, you know? That's what your parents are trying to tell you when they tell you to go to law school. That really wasn't an option for me. Of course it was. You were smart enough. I would have been miserable in law school. Everybody's miserable in law school. I like what I do. That makes one of us. You don't like what you do? Not really. Since when? Since forever. You really don't like your job? I hate my job. Oh, Peter. I'm not complaining because I do what I do. We're free from want, you know? You and the boys are free from want. Do you really want Justin to go to law school? I'm just saying that our waiter is a cautionary tale. Time got away from him. One day he's waiting tables and the next thing, thing you know, he's 41. More like 44. 46 of his day. You are amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Your wife is amazing. Dimitri was so much calmer. He wants to give you dessert on the house. That really isn't necessary. On the house. We haven't even had our entrees. Well, save a little room. We've got nothing but room. We're starving. And now he's an orphan in Darfur. She's had a salad. I've had nothing but a berry. You had an amuse-bouche. The size of an acorn. What can I say? We had an unexpected crisis. Peter somehow kicks his beer over. There's a guilty clank. What was that? I got it. <laughs> when this floor gets wet, it's like... Orville and Dean. It's fine. It was almost empty. Sam Adams? I was headed to the bathroom and I thought... Why not stop at the bar? Exactly. Why not pay cash? It just seemed easier. Tipping the bartender just seemed more convenient. I told him not to do it. If you had just brought me my beer... Oh, no. I didn't bring you your beer. No, you didn't. Somebody failed to bring you what you asked for. Not somebody. The world is your oyster, but tonight the pearl was slow in coming. Okay. That must be so hard when you're used to getting everything you've ever wanted. I haven't gotten everything I ever wanted. Uh, there you have the power, but guess what? This is my restaurant. It's not your restaurant. Why? Because I don't own it? Because I'm not Big Sam the businessman? I didn't say I was Big Sam the businessman. Because I'm not as cashmere and fancy and fertile as you? Fertile? Because I don't have children going to Ivy League schools. Liberal arts schools, actually. Because I'm not as wealthy as you are. I don't care who's wealthy. You asked me what I made last year. You did ask him that. She stole the bed basket. It was your idea. And suddenly my dining room becomes the Wild West. Customers are sidling up to the bar. They're stealing napkins and shards of bread. Here, why don't I just give you my apron, hand you the order pad, and throw in the name badge? Well, I'm gonna need a different name badge. So it seems this is humorous to you. Hypothermia is humorous to you. He didn't say that. You know the conditions in that freezer were exactly like the top of Mount Everest? That's what the EMT said. Not exactly. There's no wind. And no crevasses. And no altitude sickness. And there was plenty of oxygen. Man, had 700 pounds of insulation. Excuse me if I can't find all this hilarious, but I'm still reeling from what just happened to my mentor. Your employer. My business partner. So you have some financial stake in this restaurant? No. You don't? No. And you've worked together for 20 years? On and off. Then, son, you are not his business partner. Of course we're partners. Do partners scold each other? He was upset. Do partners speak to each other as if you were 10 years old? It's a very macho culture. If you were working for me, I'd have you open a second restaurant. 
you would? Definitely. How would that work? I'd be happy to give this topic the attention it deserves once I've sampled the food. I mean, in business terms, that's the product. I've always thought that hospitality was the real product. Nope, it's the food. I mean, if I were a paid consultant, oh, wait, I am a paid consultant. That's where I'd start. But I'd have to have a meal before I can begin to address the issue. I'd really like to pick your brain about this. First things first, we'll discuss it after dinner. That may be a while yet. The sous chef is slow as Christmas. You don't know how to plate the food? I mean, I know how. <laughs> how long have you been in this business? 20 years. Then you march into that kitchen and get it done. That was amazing. Well. You were amazing. I mean, for years, I've told people what you do, but I didn't really know what you did. Management consulting motherfuckers. <laughs> when you knocked over that beer bottle, I thought he was going to go postal. Not on my watch. I was checking for the exits. Are there any? Well, that, that family must have gone somewhere. Ta-da! Here we are. There it is. Oh. Lamb du jour for the lady. Yum. Lamb du jour for the gentleman. It smells fantastic. And in the kitchen, a little spanakopita for me. What? You're having the spanakopita? Comfort food. But, but I wanted the spanakopita. That's not what you ordered. Uh, yes, it was. You told me not to get it. I told you it was frozen. And, and then you told me about the microwave. I just stuck mine into the oven. Well, you didn't stick mine in the oven. I offered. I didn't know we'd be waiting anyway. Menu envy. What did I tell you? It's not menu envy. Just try yours. You're going to love it. I was really craving that spanakopita, and he talked me out of it. I could go stick one in the oven now. It would take forever. The microwave, then. Buzzards would be circling by the time you got back. You're just hungry. I'm so hungry. Here, I'll feed you. Good? Mmm. More? Oh, my God. You like? <laughs> she likes. It's like... Swallow first. It's like the nectar of the gods. Sounds like maybe your wife likes the product. <laughs> like it. She loves it. But what's missing here? We can't forget the hospitality. The sweet goat. And? The Sam Adams. <laughs> Good man. Eat. Oh, my God. Amazing? It's like... Spices. Oh, you, you got a little s sauce on your cheek there. Why don't you lick it off? <laughs> Maybe I will. <sighs> Is it good? So good. <laughs> An anniversary toast to the woman I love. You don't have to do that. Raise your glass. All I have is water. Raise it anyway. To the woman I love, in sickness and in health. Spanakopita. Spanakopita. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like Zorba the Greek. Whoopa. Like I might burst into song. Uh-oh. I can sing. Sweetie, you can't. Not as well as you, maybe. I was the acapella guy. Thank you. Thank you. For all you do for us. For all of this. Oh my God, the candle. 
The waiter finally lights the candle on the table, which softly illuminates the couple as they clink their beer glasses and the lights go out. The play is over. Thank you, David Victor, Janet Rathard, Damian Lawn, and thank you all for watching. For more that's happening at the Stratford Library, visit our website at www.stratfordlibrary.org. Thank you.